Hey guys, I don't know about you, but July kind of smushed into August really quickly for me. So today I'm going to be wrapping up July, talking about my current reads, and then talking about my TBR or lack thereof TBR for August. Um, we're also going to be tackling the question, did I or did I not fail my very first Jane Austen July? Stick with me. So hi, my name's Talia. I love books, I love bandanas, and I'm so happy you are at my channel today. Um, I'm just gonna be doing kind of a casual reading update today. I did um, a couple of pretty thorough reviews of books I read in the beginning of July. Um, we had The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, um, The Messy Lives of Book People by Feta Patrick, and um, Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Austin. All of those books I loved. Um, so I'm gonna link reviews to those up here if you would like to check those out um, and see what I thought for the first part of July. Today we're going to be covering the end of July, what I've read, so I'll start with that first, then move into current reads and kind of the plan that I have finishing up August. It's already August 9th today, so I'm already like a big chunk through. It's just kind of gotten away from me with um, all the fun of summer, so let's get right into it. Um, first, I finished in July. Um, the Girl Who Drank the Moon. Um, this was kind of a disappointment for me. I was expecting to love it. I had heard great things. It's middle grade fantasy. I've been really into middle grade fantasy lately. Um, I was really expecting to love it, and I didn't. Um, it's funny because when I was reading it, the first thing that just kind of put me off is it didn't really feel like middle grade fiction to me. It felt older, um, just in terms of like, kind of content and themes like not like graphic themes but it, it just didn't feel like it was written for middle schoolers um the whole theme of the book is there's this town who is kind of in the middle of nowhere and every year they sacrifice this baby they go leave this baby in the woods um for the witch of the woods to find um and every year the witch of the woods comes and takes this baby and is like why are they leaving this baby in the woods and she takes the baby and um gives it to another family to take care of it so it's this kind of like weird miscommunication thing going on um and you find out right at the beginning of the book that the people in the city know that there's not a really witch taking the baby they're basically just taking this baby to die in the woods to um regain control of the people so right away at the beginning i was like Huh, that's like a really, it was just kind of a more intense topic for a middle grade book than I thought at the very beginning. Um, it was kind of like more politically charged than I thought it would be at the very beginning. Um, so I don't know. And then, so you think the girl who drank the moon, so one day the witch, um, who actually is taking the kids, gives her moonlight instead of starlight, so the child becomes very magical. So she decides to keep her and raise her as her own. So and that's not spoiler, that's like just from the back of the book. Um, and so you think the book is going to be based on the cover about the girl who drank the moon. Um, but it really was more about like the adult in the story and the adults um, trying to figure out what was going on with the, the system in place and why they were giving away these babies and more about her grandmother figuring out how to raise her. Um, so I don't know, just it, it wasn't what I expected. It was not as magical. It wasn't much it did become more about the girl as the story went on but you never really like felt a bond for her character um the only character i really bonded with was like this cute little dragon who i loved um and kind of the swamp monster like i don't know they were really likable for me and i will read you a quote like i loved this quote in the book and there was some like beautiful writing written into it um so i'll share with you it said and glurk felt a crack in his heart as thin as a pencil line he pressed his four hands to his chest trying to keep it from breaking in half so there was like parts like that that I was like oh that's beautiful like I love that but at the same time like the book just kind of went on and on and I never really felt like I cared about what was happening so yeah so it just kind of ended up being a three out of four for me nothing crazy exciting wouldn't really recommend it not one that I feel like I will introduce to my kids anytime soon like it just it wasn't the magic that I hoped it was. It was fine. The ending was fine. It all came together and like, it was fine. But also, 
didn't really care. Um, it was a group read as well, and I happened to know a couple people DNF'd it. So I know I wasn't the only one that was kind of underwhelmed um, by it. So it is what it is. Um, okay, next I read, okay, <laughs> this, I actually finished this last night. So let's talk about my very first Jane Austen July. I had never read a Jane Austen book before. So it's getting to be June. I'm trying to make the plans for July. And I found out that there is Jane Austen July event in, um, in July. And I, um, found a group read for Persuasion, and this was hosted by Spread Book Joy, um, Jacqueline. Um, I love her channel. I will link her channel below for you. Um, I love listening to her talk about books. Um, and she um, was hosting this Jane Austen July readath readathon on Boxer. And the plan was the first week of July to read the first half, the second half of July to read the second half, no, the second, yeah, the second week to read the second half and then to watch the new Netflix adaptation of Persuasion the last half of July. So I dove right into it. Like the first day of July, I'm like, okay, here we go. I'm reading, I'm reading Persuasion. Really had no idea what to expect at all from Jane Austen. And I started reading it and like the first like page, I had to read like five or six times. <laughs> I was like, huh this is quite a different style of writing than I am used to. Um, this was first published in 1818. So it's an older work. It was Jane Austen's last work um, that she wrote before passing away. Um, not a long novel. So I'm like reading and I'm like, okay, it's fine. Like you can get through this. And right away I was like behind. Like I could not read fast enough to catch up with where I was supposed to be in the readathon. And people were posting and posting um, like video, I mean like voice messages and and messaging about different parts of the book. And I just could not keep up with it. I was like, what is going on? I'm still on like page four. Like it was just really hard for me to read. <laughs> and like I, I pressed on, I kept reading just slowly, kind of trying to figure out what was going on. It was hard for me to keep track of like the characters. Um, and I made it to like chapter eight I think it was and like by the time I made it to chapter eight like the readathon was pretty much over like they were on the part where <laughs> where they were watching the video and I was just like man <laughs> but I didn't want to give up because I was like interested enough in the characters that were going on I was just having a really hard time with the style of writing because it's just not the type of style I'm I'm used to things such as consequently and of consequence and instead of he said said he or like said she like it's it's just hard to get the flow so i first i put down my hard copy and i tried to watch the netflix adaptation because i was like oh you know maybe that'll help me at least know what's going on with the story and then i'll be able to come back to the book and i made it like two minutes into that and i was like nope nope <laughs> Like the first beginning was so cheesy. I was like, no, can't do it. Can't do it. And I had heard also from the ladies talking in our group discussion that they did not like the adaptation either. So I didn't feel too bad about that. So I decided to switch to audiobook. So we had um, a little bit of a lull because I had to wait for the audiobook to become available from the library. It became available. I started from the beginning again, listening to the audiobook, and I went from there. And I really liked it. Um, it was so much easier just having someone read to me and be able to kind of like put a little bit of different enunciations on the voices and it just helped it flow much easier for me and reading the first part again like I had read it and known what was happening but like having the first part listening to it again really helped me like build the foundation for the, for the story and be like oh okay I get where we're going here. Um, so I liked it. It was a fun read. I wouldn't give it like but I mean, it's not a five star for me. I feel like the story was kind of predictable and they kind of like <laughs> just the way they acted in that way is not at all how we acted today. So one part of me loved it because I was like, oh, she's like wanting to like talk to this man. And she's like, oh, I can't just go talk to him. I have to like wait for him to make eye contact. And like the whole time I was like, is she going to be with this guy? Is what's going to happen? Like it was very, um, it kept me engaged. I actually listened when I was driving last night. I was like, listening and like the end was kind of building up and I was just like yes like I was excited for how it wrapped up and ended which was predictable but still like was nice when it all came together the way I wanted it to 
So I was really happy because I did not fail Jane Austen July and I really thought I was going to for a while. I was like, I can't do it. Um, but I didn't. I finished it. Um, I actually think I will read this again. I think I would like to go through now that I understand the story and the flow and the characters more. Um, I think I could gain a lot from reading it again. So I will be doing that at some point. As for reading more Jane Austen, not anytime soon. It probably will be. Um, I'll give it another chance for the next, um, the next Jane Austen in July. I'm thinking maybe Pride and Prejudice will give that a chance um, then. So yeah, that's how Jane Austen July slash August went for me. Another book I read was called Thank You for Listening by Julia Whalen. Um, this book was a net galley pick for me. Um, I thought it was contemporary fiction. It ended up being way more romance than I thought it was. So we have our main character, her name is Sawaini, and her job is to read audiobooks. And she's very good at it. Um, she's been doing it a long time. She used to read romance audiobooks. She does not anymore. She thinks the whole category of like romance books are kind of stupid with their predictable endings and like their fake happiness and she doesn't do it anymore. However, she ends up getting hired to read the female part in a romance novel um, opposite of a very popular male romance novel reader. So um, it kind of goes from there. And I thought the premise was kind of cute. Um, I didn't love the book though. I felt like it was very um, kind of choppy and just the way it was put together was very like, it felt like the author had like a place she wanted to kind of go but she didn't know how to get there so she chopped all these bits and pieces together to make it happen. It was like there's like the the one night stand in Vegas and then there's like the the sick grandma which motivates her to like take the job and then there's like the deadbeat dad and then there's like this conveniently her mother's in another country so when so things start going bad she can like run away to her and like just the way it all was put together felt very like oh of course that would happen now like of course that would happen now like oh yep that's happening it was just, was just uh, it was just very predictable for me it also was pretty smutty in parts I skipped like a whole chapter at one point I was like this is just not what I like to read so there was some really funny moments um there was kind of a twist that I was like oh okay but then like just the relationships the way they interacted it didn't feel real um it just didn't it didn't do it for me. So that was a 2.5 star for me. So it's two on NetGalley and Goodreads. Not one I would particularly recommend. It's hard because it was it was just more romance than I thought it was going to be. Um, again, because I thought it was just going to be more of like a contemporary fiction read. Um, and I, I don't love romance books. So I think that really from the beginning was like set up to be kind of a fail for me. Um, but I didn't think it was very well written either. So there's that one. That was the bummer for the month. Um, I also just finished. So my book club pick, my real life person book club pick was Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. I really liked this book and I'm not going to talk too much about it right now because I have not been to book club yet. Our book club is meeting this week and we're going to do our full discussion on this. And I don't want to talk to my people on the interwebs before I talk to my real life ladies because I love them and I'm so excited to have a discussion with this on them. But I'm sure I'll do um, more recap on this in the future. Um, and this is one I will tell you that I definitely recommend. So what am I reading now? As far as audiobooks go, when I was in the lull of um, persuasion, waiting for it to be picked up from the library, I started listening to um, Between Two Kingdoms by Suleika Jaoi, Jaod? I'm sure that's not right. I'm sorry, Suleika. Um, and this is a story about Suleika, and she is actually reading her own audiobook, which I really like when um, when the authors do that. It's just like, I feel like they can put the enunciations where they want it to be, um, especially for memoirs. Um, so she's reading her own story, and um, it's her story of growing up, being a normal college girl, and starting having like these these crazy symptoms like super weakness and pain and itching and like just getting weaker and weaker and finally being diagnosed with a super rare um, type of leukemia and just being so sick that she cannot even get out of bed. It can barely even like lift her head some days, just 
getting so sick. Um, and it's the story about her journey through that. Um, so I was about halfway through when I had to pick up persuasion. Um, I had to, I was about halfway through when I picked up persuasion again. And during that time, my library hold expired on the audiobook. So I'm waiting to get that back because I really want to see how, um, it turns out. I'm going to get the potato out of his ear now. Okay, so judge me if you want, but my kids would not let me clean their ears like at all. And they were getting so gross. So I sat them all down one day and I told them that if they don't let me clean their ears, potatoes will grow in them. And ever since then, they let me clean their ears. And sometimes they come to me and say they have potatoes and they need their ears clean. So I don't make it a practice to lie to my children, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do and your kids have to have clean ears, right? So yeah. Anyways, so I'm waiting for that to come back available at the library so I can finish listening because I really want to hear how her story turns out. Obviously, I know she survived because she wrote her memoir and um, is reading it to us, um, but she's just getting to the part of her story where she's kind of like starting to write and journal her feelings about everything that's going on. Um, and it's just, it's just really interesting story. It's a, it's a heartbreaker for sure, like the stuff she goes through, but um, I'm definitely liking that. My main current read for the month of August is Name of the Wind by Patrick Pappas. This is a fantasy novel. I do not know much about it except for when I searched a few months back fantasy novels for people trying to get into like beginning fantasy novels. This was one of the best fantasy novels recommended. Um, it has a sequel and there's supposed to be a third written at some point. There's a lot of internet drama about when he's going to write or not write the third novel and when that's going to happen. Um, so it's a chunker. It's going to take a big amount of time. Um, it's one that I feel like I have to pretty f focus pretty hard to stay into at the very beginning, just because I'm not sure of the characters and learning what's going on um, in it, but I have pretty high hopes for it. So this is going to take a lot of the month for me. So since it's going to take a lot of the month, I already have another audiobook. I'm like halfway in between. Um, I'm not making an official TBR for August. I have some books for June and July left over that I didn't read that I might, um, that I might read. I also just found out that, um, Finlay Donovan is killing it. Just became available on my library holds. And that is by El Cosimino. Um, and I've been hearing such good things about that. It's about a girl um, who is a writer and she's laying out a plot for one of her stories, like in a cafe or a restaurant or something. Um, and it's about how to kill a woman or a man or something. And um, someone hears her and thinks she's an actual hit woman and hires her to murder someone for them. And she is a mom and needs money, so she takes the job. Um, and I've heard really good things about it. I'm gonna try to sneak that into August, I think, because I um, have had it on hold for quite a while and I don't wanna have to wait more for it. Um, but again, this is gonna be the top priority. And then, um, like, I still haven't started Robin Hobb. I really wanna start um, reading some of her work. Um, there's just so many books I wanna read. So I'm gonna focus on this. Um, and also, when I go to book club, there will be another book um, that I need to read for that. So I'm just gonna kind of play it by ear. I'm gonna have to start filming at night, which I do not enjoy. And the lighting is not as good as during the day, but this is probably my like 15th interruption for this video. So I'm starting to feel a little crazy. And you can't video, you can't record appropriately when you have your crazy eyes. So, so Holler at me if you have twins. Tell me it's gonna be okay. I know some of y'all have twins that are older than mine. This is a time I need some encouragement. Leave it to me in the comments below. Okay, so we're gonna stop filming for now because the kids are knocking. Um, I hope you are having a good day wherever you are. I hope you have some time um, to read a good book or two, maybe pick up a chunker to wrap up your summer. Um, and if you are having a bad hair day, just wear a bandana. Bye.